time properly at all. <laughs> ah, well. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. Got a bit of a shadow going on, aren't we? A bit of a... Like... <laughs> it's alright, this camera's absolutely amazing. What happens if we turn the studio lights on? Oh, God. That's even worse, isn't it? No, you're alright. A bit orange. Right then, instead of messing it... Oh, God's sake, this isn't comfy, is it? Instead of messing around, let's mess around. Um, this is number four. Oh, it's the lead. It's the fucking lead. Right. Just put the lead round the back of its own base. There we go. So, the, the camera, this camera, I've put it on a block of steel on a stand that's separate from the table. So I can bash the table and it doesn't bash that. Uh, talented. <laughs> Dickhead. Uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're getting on now. So, 59. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, it's terrible. Do not show us the box. Come on. Oh. Seven. Oh, my God. What are you trying to do? It's almost like, oh, look at all I've done. It's like, yeah, no, it's criminal. Is, is this just stringing out the view time? We'll watch this because it's funny. I'm changing the battery on my uh, micrometer while we're sat here. I know, I know. A battery in a micrometer. Once you've got a digital display, as you never go back, ever. It's just, it's just instant, instant. Oh, I do have a problem with this. While watching this tard, do a montage of how he slowly ruined this bike. Oh, that's before you irreparably bent the. Uh, Subframe. Nice. Here I used to be happy. At least that's what I did. I'm just using this moment to re zero this. Every time I seem to put the bottle down, life walks up. He's still pissing around. I hate that when it resets, it resets in inches. I don't do that. How dare you? <coughs> One thing I will say about this while he's yapping on is the light isn't perfect. But you see there, look at that. Look at that. That's that's a bit of swarf that chipped off and landed on it and melted. Look at why? Why is this not tough than glass or something? You bloody assholes! Right, like, literally, right. That's the battery seal at the back. Oh, and if you want to know, a washer sometimes they fit, but the curved end of your scale fits in there great. That literally just goes in there and undoes them. It's got a rubber seal in it, so it doesn't get coolant and shit in it, right, to stop it because it knows it's around machines. So if you know you're around machines, why make this out of a bit of plastic? Nobeds. Nobeds. Now, I know someone's going to say, well, maybe you shouldn't keep your machine. This near swarf. Fuck off. Like you've ever done any machine in your life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, we'll be back. Now. Alright, there we go. In the last one of these fabrication videos, you saw that I ran out of gas, which was extremely irritating, honestly, because I wanted to do so much more. I really did. Did the main uh, strength brace, put the first piece of wire on, zap. Run out of gas. That is just the way it goes. It's always that way. And the reason for it... He did more, look. He just didn't show us. Um, and it's because you're unorganised and you're using crappy bottles. Little tiny little shit bottles the last five seconds. To be honest, is these disposable bottles. There's no valve on them in the sense of no gauge. You can't tell how much is in them and they don't last very long. Uh, if you're welding constantly, you've got about 20 minutes in one of them. They're not really... <coughs> Not really the way to go, but I'm, I've been using them forever and ever and ever. Obviously, ever since I've been doing videos on the tube, 
that's for sure. At least six years I've been using those disposables and I must have 30 of those bottles. And when I add up the cost of those things against the cost of a big bottle, it just makes me cry, it really does. So that's it, I've now upgraded not just the gas, but the whole weld rig, uh, so that it is that much more usable. I'll show you what I've done. Let's see you look around. Oh, can't wait. Right, here we are. Now I am quite proud of this. Quite chuffed. Yeah. This was about four hours yesterday. After I got back from the weld shop, I just uh -oh. set about sorting out this. This is now, move it around. That is now my weld rig. It's completely. Oh look, he's got a little inverter that's his He's sorted out now, it's exactly, I've been so long having the machine kind of bunged under there, I've now gained that space back and... Wait there, what is it? It's a 135T. 135T. Isn't that what I guessed? Well, I'll know about the pictures. A 135... Oh no, I thought he had a snazzy one, didn't I? Isn't this the one watch the videos on? It might be actually. No, it was. I'm sure that was the one. His looks different though. He looks completely. What am I doing? Yeah, his looks completely different. Like this doesn't have the handle on it, does it? Do you have the handle? It might have had the handle on it. it does look different. Oh, yeah. 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 It might be different. Who knows? Uh, oh, Amazon. How much are they selling it for? Hundreds? Ugh. We've got a close picture of it. Oh, for God. So I always go on there because they have the big picture and you can always zoom in. Um, there. What's it got? Oh, no, because the one we looked at yesterday, yesterday, whatever the video was, had three positions on it. This has two. Is it what does this look like? Yeah. So he only has he has minimum maximum. He only has four power settings. Oh, look, someone's someone's cadded this up. <laughs> oh my god! Why would you waste your time? Oh, well, it's a bit of software where it's all texture. There we go. So yeah, look, he's got. Min max at two positions, so he's got four power settings and then just a zero to ten wire feed. Um, oh, look, you, you can buy this, it's $40. $40 for the rig. <laughs> That's quite funny. Just a 3D model. Um, oh my god. What are you doing? Right. Here's my example, this shit welds. <laughs> Any road, let's listen to what we got to say. So he's got a little regulator on there. Just tripping over it, I had the wheels fitted to it and so on, and it just used to wheel it around. So I took the handle off, took the wheels off, and set it solidly on a proper trolley so I can move it around in a proper way now. Oh, did you buy a proper trolley? I'm sure he had this trolley before. And the old machine is the old, this was a, this is an art welder I've got. It's a, a Look, it says TIG. 13 clock. Well, see, it's just scratch start and it's not high frequency or anything. So you've got your amperage on there, and then you've got your switch and overload. Stick welder, basically. Um, that's the old stick welding head. Yeah, which has never been used. And that's great. I'm going to keep that as an art welder because I can do outdoor welding on a fence. I want to make some railings for the house, so that might be a useful tool for I'd love that to see because it. MIG outdoors, uh, blah blah blah, it's better to do stick welding if you can. Also, that's got the TIG head for it. You can invert these and use them as a scratch TIG welder. So that's not what inverter means, but whatever. <laughs> I've got all the stuff for that, and I will be learning some TIG welding in the future, and I'll get to that, but not at the moment. Honestly, it's all stacked away, stowed away, cable tied, nice and safe. I don't need that, so it's going to stay out of the way. And the rest of it, it means I can do this move it around I can get to it I can access things I can move it I'm sorry but that place is tiny I don't really really see why you have to move it around that around way. the workshop and do stuff with it I can slide it through there if I need you know it's much more mobile than it actually was when I had the wheels on this and I was trying to lift that thing because they're not they're not light I did run out of ah they're not heavy fuck wire. off you might remember I was using a stainless roll little ditty one 
Uh, so I went and got a five kilo big roll. Of oh, they're the wheels off it. They store them inside like that. Um, point That's quite cute. Isn't eight it? mig wire, standard mild steel. You can weld stainless steel to mild steel, but it's it's not okay. ideal. It isn't ideal. No, you can. It's fine. People do it all the time. I used to do testing on welds that were mild steel, and what is it? Because that's the thing, when you used to etch them, you used to get, um, you, you use one acid to, one acid is actually a cocktail, one acid etch for uh, the stainless and one for the um, the mild steel. And the weirdest thing is when you put the acid on either way, um, the green stuff, when you put it to do stainless steel, it never used to show the mild steel. Mild steel just disappears, it's just not there. And then when you'd go and do the other half and do the stainless, you'd flick it around, do the mild steel, it just appears out. And you're like, holy shit, literally the two completely different processes. The, the best way to do it is that I've just stored the old wheels in there. Oh, right, no, out the way, it. just so that they're not in the way and I don't lose them. So, a new roll of wire. They're covered in shit, though, you know what I mean? Oh, there, right? That was a little expense. It was about £15 or so. And the gas bottle. This is the most. There we go. This is the most forward step I've made for a long time here in the workshop. It really is. I've been struggling with those daft gas bottles for a long time, running out, keep replacing them. Why? Now I've done it properly. I've got a proper decent sized bottle that's safe. I'm not using just CO2. This is a MIG welding mix. So you get 93% 93... 93 argon, 5% CO2 and 2% O2. Why? 3%, it's 93 argon, 5% CO2, and apparently 2% O2. Uh, O2, that's oxygen. Yeah. Well, there's, there's O2 there, look. Anyway, there we are, that's a me. <laughs> See his cogs in his head. It's probably because, like we read before, it's because of the thermal conductivity. Welding mix. I went to Wellington Weld Supplies. Great guys, they helped me out with it, gave me all the right advice so that I'm using the right thing. And more importantly than anything, I've now got which I wanted a regular... Well, you want a cover for that, because you're going to butt that. While you're wheeling around that, you're going to knock that. It's literally sat on the outside edge. Corner, sorry. Outside corner. Oh, God. You need to put something around that. Make a little shield for it. There. Which means I can keep a, an idea on how much gas I've got, and I can prepare by going and getting more. So I don't do what I did last week. Start putting the first weld on, and then promptly run out. This is full up. Um... It's only 150 PSI. The contents cost £39 of that. That's all it cost. I don't think that's bad at all. The bottle rental, the whole lot Six comes quid. to 100 and... I think it's 146 quid. Yeah, about, about 60 quid, isn't it? Or oh, whatever. No, what did he say? 146? It was. Oh, he's probably rented out the regulator the as bottle, well. The bottle, regulator, and the gas, obviously. And now that the regulator and the gas is paid for from now on, it'll be 40 quid to fill that up, which I don't think is too bad. 40 pounds. I'm thinking back in 2016 as well. And Dan's ad. That's about, I think what's in there is about 10 or 12 of those disposables. They're 15 pounds each, so that's. I don't know what the PSI, or the, how, how many bars there are in there. You just work out by pressure. It's 150 to, to 180 quid for 10 of those, that one is as much gas and will cost me about 40 quid. So I'm literally a third of the price now for gas and it will last and last and last. That'll probably last me a year, maybe, I don't know. See how much welding I do. And the regulator is a nice piece of kit as well because it means that I can actually work out if I've got a windy situation outside or whatever I'm welding, you can just chuck up a little bit more pressure on the gas so that you're blowing a little bit harder on the shield gas. So it's a bit more controllable, but you only need it literally, oh, maybe six, five, six bar pressure, not even that. What? what? And it's when what? you what get... Are you That's floor rate, you dickhead. You get a few money. Look at the size of that. You get 160 bar. Look, it literally says CFH, litres per minute. <laughs> there is the bar gauge on the inside, but... Pressure really doesn't matter, it's your flow rates. You don't need it to come out at a certain pressure. You need to flow a certain amount. What's it, he's talking shit again. Even that, and it's when you get, what you get for your money, look at the size of that. You get 160 bar, 2,200 pierce. Well, it's about 150 or whatever. That's gonna last me and last me. I've done it quite well, nice little setup on that. Um, you know, if you've got one of these me. 
I'd move that bottle out. I know it's got this little cutout for it, but I'd move the, try and move the bottle that way as much as possible. You get these daft little plastic tube that feeds the gas into the machine, and I wanted to li link that to the regulator, so you need a little adapter hose. There was another expense, about 12 quid, and I've just coiled that around the neck. Can't really see it. I've just coiled it around the neck. There we are. And that just adapts in. Just that push welder doesn't have a proper hose attachment. What's on the other end of that, Dell? Because it's probably got an adapter that goes down. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. She's <laughs> in the uh, end. So that's my gas feed. And it's nicely stowed, the whole thing. Well, that's what they were designed for. You could have welded one of them up. The whole thing. Well, you couldn't. Works. But, yeah. Really chuffed with it. And it I don't know why. You see, this little hook, Del, this, you, you're going to catch yourself. What do you think this hook's for here? It's much more usable <sighs> than it was. Looking at a weld trolley is like one of the first things. It's like, you, I haven't got one. I haven't got one. Um, but, like, when guys start doing their apprenticeships and all the rest of it, and then they get their own rig, one of the first things they do is go, I'm going to weld up one of them. I don't move it. Mine just sits there. I don't move it around anywhere. I go to it kind of thing. And it's literally in reach. It's like this side and then the bike the well the, the 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 what is there and then the bench that i use and do my welding on that is next to it so i'm absolutely fine where it is much more convenient nice little setup so here we are um, it wasn't the only expense i got uh, some more sanding belts for the belt sander as well you know if you run your garage like i do with this one if you do like I do with this do one. In a way that you're, you're turning it over almost like a business, you know, a non-profit making business where you're building a bike and you're constantly doing jobs and making things. He's definitely making profit, don't you worry about that. There is always a cost, there really is. Um, you know, bought a bag of gloves because you just go through them, they just wear out. We haven't seen you wearing any gloves. Well, you've had the same pair of gloves for ages. Another £10. So, you know, I think I spent something like £140. Fucking steady on. A hundred and twenty pounds. A hundred and forty. Well supplies. Because I had the old argon bottle, I'd already paid the initial outs. Look at these, right? Look, I, I bought this today. <laughs> I bought a pack of fuses for a pound. You have it easy. <laughs> Outlay of renting the bottle, and I just had to pay for the different contents. And I did lose the rest of the argon that was in there because they can't sell that. They just they just take it back and whatever. So there's the point. It was a lot of money. I went out with all of the other. Ex what? So said that again. They just robbed an argon bottle off you. Had to pay for the different content. Whoa, 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 whoa. A hundred and forty pounds at the world supplies because I had the old argon bottle. I'd already paid the initial out outlay of renting the bottle, and I just had to pay for the different contents. And I did lose the rest of the argon that was in there because they can't. So you didn't use the argon? You didn't ask for an extra bottle? What? What? How much was in that bottle? It's probably full, nearly. So he bought a bottle of argon back in the day, or whenever, a couple of years ago. He didn't say the certification on the bottle had gone, like it had timed out. So it's the same bottle. So he went there... Oh, it isn't the same bottle. So he went there. They've just nabbed a bottle off you. So uh, they just they just take it back and whatever. So this. Yeah, whatever. So it sounds like. Whoa! Keep your keep your argon bottle. It's so basically. What? <laughs> so basically, he's been robbed. This is a fucking idiot. I've got an argon bottle, right? You got an argon bottle. I've got one that size, like a little three foot one. You get. An argon bottle like that, you've taken it to them, they've gone, ah, yeah, and they've drunk the bottle, or taken the bottle, and then they've given you another bottle and filled it with this argon CO2 oxygen mix. Charge you for the bottle regulator and the, what they filled it. What happened to your argon on your bottle? The point, it was a lot of money. I went out with all of the other expenses, the belts, the big roller, big wire, the, the, the new argon bottle regulator. Once... You spent more than 140 quid. You told us the bottle was 140 quid with the regular uh, adapter, all this shit. You add in your MIG wire, you add in your gloves, you add in your linishing belts. All of that is about £150 this weekend, and that's what it costs. It just adds up. Well, that doesn't add up, you fruit. Oh, it truly does. Um, but there you are, there's me bleeding, that's not important, and it's not interesting, is it? Basically, I... 
So why are you telling us that? And they are set up. I can work a little bit more efficiently. I'll get fucking on with it. Than I was before, and that's always good because good, efficient, tidy, organised workshops are safe and they are productive, and that's the most important point. A messy, scruffy workshop is not productive. It's a difficult place to work, and you will hurt yourself inevitably in the end. Right. Let's shut off about that. There we are. Happy with my work rig now. I'm going to show you what I did in the meantime on this with the wire. Show you. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Oh, tape! You might as well use tape, because your welds are that shite. You might as well just use tape. Now, as I said, I hate to do this without you. I really do. But I had to get this rather long-winded and not particularly interesting. Why don't you, it's not particularly interesting when you do it with welding, so I don't know why he didn't show us this. ...section of it done, and it was better to do it and then talk to you for a couple of minutes about it now than it is to try and show you it, because it's just long-winded and takes ages, and that's bending these wires. You kind of got to put them in the vise and get the bend right. Can't bend with your thumbs because you get a corner where your thumb is. So it's, uh, this mild steel wire is extremely useful for this job, but it's quite soft and you have to treat it in the right way to get it to do what Is it hard or is it soft? What you want. So it took a long time, two, two and a half hours, I think. I spent just curving these. As you can see, I've put a gentle curve across. I've done about a dozen there now. The real ones, it kind of goes less and less curve as it goes back get to this one which sits across the strength brace that's actually, well, why is actually that? dead straight and then the next one curves inwards that's concave and this next final one is more concave and then I'll put I've got that wire coming down I'll make two or three more of those before I go any further and then oh. I can start tacking the whole lot together I'm only going to tack these literally like I've done with the rest of it just tack, <coughs> tack them in place so they form a skeleton and then that's going to get as you saw at the beginning somebody very kindly has sent me some aramid kevlar and i may well laminate this with kevlar i may just use the t-shirt cloth and fiberglass there's also some parachute cloth they sent as well that's quite that's a cool material because it's extremely strong indeed so in rip resistance or is it the nylex stuff uh, but it... why did someone send you some parachute cloth though you were in two para <laughs> It's, whether it's thickness will absorb the, the so I'm just experimenting some stuff really that's what that's about and that will come once I get the frame done so there's a little bit more of that to do today I'm just going to weld this up into one piece I've got a couple more pieces of these wire this wire here to bend but that one took about 15 minutes to get that bend exactly right now I can put that as a pattern and do three or four more so that works 15 minutes once you've done the first one the rest are quite easy something else you asked about the I didn't. I honestly didn't. Don't blame this on me. Spots. How are you going to get to them when you've skinned it? Well, the simple procedure French is going to be to French them. Oh, fucking God, it And is. this is what I've said to you in comments, responses to loads of you, but I'm simply going to French them. And that means taking a piece of tubing like that. Um, that is half, what is it, three quarter inch tube. Might be five eighths, don't know. But basically cut a piece of that off about half an inch not even so it makes sure you can get a socket in that perhaps oh, i don't know 10 mil not even sure but then that will get welded tack why look all right let's see if i can reach it i know this just looks like i got this shit ready but it's just a coincidence so this is conduit right flat this is two meters long uh, it'll just go on forever, it'll just keep on going. Um, this is conduit, about the right size. If you're going to use car glass fibre and resin, just don't, just don't come back at me. There you go. Um, if you're going to use glass fibre, fiberglass, whatever you want to say, which is basically resin, it's plastic. So why can't you use a plastic tube like that? It's lighter. You're going to glass it up, it's just a tube around the outside of there so where the bolt is a little 10 mil piece of that tubing it's easy get to tack welded over you the top weld it. and you'll be able to see the bolt down inside and then access it through the tube now the reason that they'll be you know 10 12 mil long half an inch is that they'll be a little bit prouder than i need them to be and once i've tacked them around the outside then i'll make the skin and leave those tubes open so i'll skin round them and then fill up the body filler, which will be a thin, you know, once I put the thin layer of body filler on, I'll, I'll fill it up to them, and then effectively you'll have French tubes. They will literally be Frenched. 
as simple as that. And then I can take a grinder or a flat disc and I can sand back. You can grind the metal, the metal, which will get really hot and do what to the surrounding plastic? And filler? I can't think of the word. To the point where I want them to be, so that they are literally flush. For once, it doesn't rhyme with Kent. Flush with the surface, so all you'll see, there'll be little holes straight down to the skin. Oh, he's editing, he's editing. And the bolts inside, they're currently M6s with a, a stimble hex head, but they're only temporary. I'm going to use button caps. So they are quite simply the ones I've used on the front ferret, which is the button head socket cap. So all you'll see, okay, you'll see the, the skin over there, head, and there'll be a little hole, six on each side. They'll be quite decorative in their own right. And you'll um, see down inside them, there'll be a little button cap sitting hidden, and that will look quite smart. So from an angle like this, you won't see anything. Except well, holes. you'll see fucking holes. If you look in them, you'll see the little socket caps inside, and that'll keep the wood. You've got, oh, yeah, little socket caps. They'll all crap out as well. At least I know today, I won't run out, I guess. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Huh. It's really boring. Okay. It's really boring for us to watch him do it, so now, instead, he's going to show us him do it. Then, how do you know you which one's which? The bent one. Oh my god. It's like he's making a fucking trap out of, um, what's it called? Naked and Afraid. It's like he's making a trap for a bloody bear or something. No, you see, it, it should lay on top of it. Oh, yeah, I thought I'd have to pause it. It has to lay on top of it, not push it. Oh, right, see, the camera does that. That's because its OIS has gone, um, Oh, yes, yeah, it's oh, yes, it's gone funny. Oh, my God. That's really hot, though. You want to turn that down? Actually, oh, shit. Can we actually see what he's got it switched to? I'd love to know what he's got it switched to. That's really seriously hot. It's, I know he's holding it on there too long. Can we see his setting from here? So he's got it on two. Oh, is it min and max? I don't... He's got it set to two, but I don't know which one's min and max. Easy way to find out. Clark 135T. Yeah, Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get me. You get me. You get me, bruv. Where is that little picture of the 3D? Because that was the one that was the closest, wasn't it? Oh, there it is. So what does that say? So min. So he's got it on two min. Oh, no, 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 he's got it on one minimum. But does he change that? We'll see what it is next time. No, he just seems to have it on the min-min. Min-min! It's on top of that bike, look like that. I don't need to pause it, do I? on top of that bike like that, but fucking yes. Right on top of his alley for him. Get on. Awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Oh, he's just going for it, isn't he? It must have more weight in well in tax than it does anything else. It's a shame he didn't. What the fuck is he doing now? It's a shame he didn't weigh. What is he doing now? Oh. Well, at least it's in the middle. Not that we can tell. Well, you can in a sense because you'll have that hole and that them holes. These holes will be pretty good indicators. And you can see this one's further away than that one. Uh, these two holes will be good indicators. Is that in the middle? It might be, but it twists away. What a fucking mess. Oh, beautiful. You'd mark it with a pen. You'd get your ruler out, you know. 
it for them spaces got inches on the back so you can tell what how you know just marks and marks Oh, he's going to weld every single last one. Literally, I'd like to see what his spool weighed before he started doing this and weigh it afterwards and say, do you know what, there's fucking... Although, most of the wire's sticking out. You can see all the little fucking shit bits where he's missed. <laughs> he's fucking shit at this, isn't he? Oh, he's doing the other side. Oh, my God. It's perfect for Tig, is this? Perfect. Little tiny little tack. Oh, that's it. You're forcing it together, Del. That's not a good act. That's just plumb straight, that. Wow. What? Get in there. Right, I'm sorry. Did he just say perfect? Hello. Oh, I thought I said perfect. That'll come in a minute. Well, it is an hour. <laughs> Fucking an hour. What a wonderful way to spend an hour. If awesome. Anyone, right. Imagine if time turns out to be this finite resource. And then imagine if we're all wrong and you get there and there is this Jesus-looking motherfucker and he says, how do you spend your time? And you're like, most of it sleeping eating, shitting, going and back to and from work. Some of it on Netflix, some of it wanking, a tiny bit of it fucking, and the rest of it playing Nintendo. And then he goes, okay then. And then he goes to Dell, what did you do? And then just fucking double barrels him. And his head fucking explodes. And the rest of us get to go to this place that looks a bit like heaven. Apparently we have to pay taxes. And he goes to wherever you don't. Right, let's clean it up a little bit. What? That's it. Right, 195 individual worlds. Really, you counted it? Oh my god, you sad cunt. Uh, boo! On that, so 20 on each row 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 180 and then the little ones on the side, 195 worlds. And I'm not joking. I can't believe you've done that. He's not you just stand on that, that is so strong. Go on then, go on then. I fucking dare you. It's amazing how wire, when you support it right and make a matrix out of it, it becomes so strong. You know, honeycomb and all that. Um, right. <laughs> wire in squares, you know, honeycomb and all that. <laughs> You just can't write this. You just... I can't, is there a hexagon in there anywhere? No. So the next what? thing is to... Incidentally... Oh, why isn't this trellis? It actually is. It actually is, but whatever. I haven't welded anything to this yet. That's still adrift, but already it doesn't really move much other than straight off. It doesn't... It's all these touch, just touching, simply in contact. I've already secured. Just in case you fucking muppets don't know what touching is. <laughs> so tap. What a Worlds across there, <laughs> and then I'm going to do some worlds down here. So that oh, literally. Be this is. Do you know what? He's done all this fucking around with tanks and stuff. Now it's worth it. Now it's worth it. Any kind, if you get like a bit pissed off with him and stuff, it doesn't matter. The comedy gold has arrived. Everyone take your seats. Across the front and down, that will be joined to that. And then I can lift it off as one piece. But before I do that, I want to do this front bit next. Um, Put these little bits in place which follow the body line. Very important that as this comes down, it looks wonderful at the back, but it's got to look right at the front. It's got to look like a separate panel that looks great. So oh. I'm going to make some setting up time now, probably about an hour, half an hour to an hour of getting that set up so that when I put the sting on it, it stays there and it's in the right place because you can't unweld a weld. And when you start grinding and cutting lumps of wire, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's counterproductive. Um, incidentally, People, people have said already a couple... 
This whole thing is counterproductive. Yeah, it reminded me, hadn't disconnected the battery. Um, I've done more than that. The battery wasn't in it ages ago. Taking it off the bike and put it over there on the shelf on an Optimate so the battery's nowhere near the bike. Not because, it's not just disconnecting it, it's also that the battery itself has uh, gases inside it, acid and whatnot, so effectively that's highly explosive. So I've put the battery <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, when the reaction happens, it can produce a bit of hydrogen, right? And that hydrogen is actually vented out a lot of the time. It depends what the process is. Sealed batteries goes without saying. And uh, acid, you see, it's just him and acid. It must, it must scare the fuck out of him. It's explosive, explosive. Long way, 195 welds right there. Also, all the wiring and stuff. And, and fuse box and so on that's underneath there, that's why I've put that cloth, and when I'm done, I'll take that cloth out. It just looks perforated. Um, that's all. What is it? Is it literally cloth? I thought it was, I thought I was, I wasn't gonna say anything because he, he hasn't said anything. I was assuming it was some weird fire blanket that I've never seen before, but it's actually a bit of rag. If that sets on fire, how do you get it out? <laughs> this is stopping any any of the little sparks get to the wire and then also as final belt braces I've unplugged the ECU. This not an ECU. But number two is you can take the subframe off. You can do this not on the bike. ECU's back up here, up its backside, and I've just took both the plugs out completely and isolated it. So there's nothing Whew, it's good, good. I'm glad you've taken the ECU out of that bike that doesn't have an ECU. Oh for a minute there I thought you were doing something fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that can go wrong, nothing that can befall anything through the electric um, ampage going through the bike, through this, that's quite safe. So if you are going to weld anything on your bike, disconnect your battery, take it off the bike, put it over there and disconnect the ECU, just unplug it. If you really want belt braces, take it off the bike. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a bit dusty now, it's blown all the dust out. Uh, so I'm just going to set this up and then we can get on with some more stingage. Uh, do you know what? The, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll say one thing. The music matches what's going on. It's just all shit. Oh, that, that's all gone awry. <laughs> Look, it's just flopping around. <laughs> it's just flopping around. Nothing's held in place. Nothing's. Is it where it was? What about the other side? Are we going to make two copies and the three copies? Nah, fuck it, just weld it. Be right! Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, wow, it's like Spider-Man's been on acid. Okay, okay. Here we are. That's a long time. And that's a lovely job. Right, I'm going to clean this up. And I'll give you a close look around it. Wire brush. Close look. I like that. That's the new pen. Now, I can't remember. Did he, Were all the bikes covered? Just, just that's it. Oh, look, you had half a bar in there, though. What are you doing? What do you do that for? Leave your regular... Whatever, whatever. Here we go, now that is something like... Oh my god. Yes! 380 worlds now. Wow. Um, just cons... Well, hang about. It was 200. And it, you reckon you've done another 180 just on this little chicken wire bit here? Fuck off. Considering some of them are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It just adds up. These little pieces there. It's weird. Look at that. Just add strength. Just make the oh, whole yeah. thing rigid. Boom. And it is so rigid. It's, like, it's just like it's. Made. Oh, slap it again with your hand. Just give me made the hand. solid steel. It's not solid though, is it? it? Doesn't move anywhere. Love it. I've left these front edges currently unsupported. So there's a little bit of flex in them still. Not a lot, but it's just enough so that when I do the final fitting of the tank, um, the panel gap's about a quarter of an inch. That's what I want, about quarter of an inch panel gap. So until I bolt the tank down into its final position, rear 
and front. I've got no mounts at the minute, the whole tank's adrift. So I've left oh, myself, I centralised the tank and left myself about half an inch all the way around. And I'll fine tune that when the, when the lamination stage comes. So it's oh. absolutely perfect all the way around. But there we are, see the other side? Yeah, please. Do you do both? I like that, that's got... Oh no, what happened here? This is kind of now got that. What happened here? Curvature, that when you sit on it, your legs will fall into that curve. Oh, he's scarred his tank and nearly burnt it loads of times. That's a break. He welded it broken. Curve. So that gives it that sort of strength. And on the front, just came up. Look at that, it looks like an alien fetus. It is just a cloth with burn holes in it, look. <laughs> what a twat. Oh, you should have soaked it in petrol. From the, from the <gasps> look, has he nicked that? He has looked the bastard. Look, he's nicked that look with the grinder or whatever he did. Fucking look at all. Look at this shit. It's beautiful. From the base. Hot spatter marks. Just coming up slightly on those. Only about, I reckon it's about half an inch rise to the front. Loads and loads. Oh, he's cut his own bullshit out. And loads more to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there we are. Seven hours of fun and games. That's just been the most therapeutic and enjoyable and satisfying part of this build yet. It truly mm. has. It's certainly on a par with getting those tubes in the belly pan just right as well. Absolutely loving this. If you're going to build a bike yourself, there is a monumental amount of reward, self-gratifying reward that you enjoy yourself. We'll see how long, what the fuck that was, we'll see how long it takes for his um, love of this to disappear. Because it's always, I fucking love with this, I'm fucking love with this. And when it starts to go a bit sour, it's like, I just want to move on to the next bit. <laughs> ...from creating something and doing it yourself too. Believe it or not, right, a lot of people have seem to realise this. It was this. And then I believe, not long after this came the um, Bonar Boost, I think. Just so that you can say I did that, it's mine. I made that and there's not another one like it. Totally chuffed. Just to find out that's not welded yet. Oddly enough, this putting all... You thought he was going to tell us the same thing. All this together. That used to boogie sideways and backs and forwards all over the place, but now it doesn't move really other than upwards. That, He's telling us the same thing again. Not easily. So when I do well, okay. that, it's going to be so rigid. I'm going to bring some of these curved wires here oh. out onto this section, out onto the cheek, half a dozen coming out on there, and then grind them flat in. So that will sweep from this cheek. It will sweep in, along, and then out. So you'll have like a what wasted I don't set. What I don't understand is, again, if he was making a plug, fair enough. But it's not section in the middle which all sports bikes have so that will look correct and not lardy which I'm really chuffed with everything so far is right never say never <laughs> you never know what's coming this seat at the moment that is about an inch and a half above the rails which is nice that's nice as it is nice. and it's going to get about nice. another inch because it's going to get a very thin seat in leather so extremely thin probably no padding just some a memory foam or something on the back just to take that would that would be padding <laughs> take out a little bit of the shop but it's not getting a big squidgy armchair crap it's going to be just real minimal i'll I, I tell you what you have a, a, a what a 10 10 millimeter thick seat you tell me how comfy that is um maybe just go with a steel base literally and just sit on a steel base if you know your street fighters you'll know that's reasonably common but i do want to do some miles so I'm thinking a proper seat that I can get away with that will actually complement the bike. And I've got a professional guy who really, really makes awesome seats and we may just farm that one out to him so that we get something that's worthy of all the hours we're putting in. Seven hours today. Oh. Seven hours. And Three hours last night and four today, so you seem to be bullshit. Amazing. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, for all of your consideration. This build is it's getting more and more fascinating, more and more engaging for me, and I think for the feedback for you as well. So who knows where it goes from here. Um, lots and lots to come. I mean, serious lots to come. It's gonna get better and better. This fabrication stage, this is kind of 
like cruising along in the doldrums. It's going to rev up. It's going to start getting more. I thought you said you love this bit. More exciting, certainly for me, and I hope you enjoy it too. But there we go. Thanks for watching. Take easy. Ride safe. Until next time. I don't believe him. I think that he knows it's shit. I think he fully understands how shit that looks. And then he just bigs himself up to look good in front of the camera. And then what happens is, is sometimes when he really is chuffed, when he says that I'm really... I'm, you, and he sounds genuine. I think he is because he knows how shit he is. And it isn't as bad as he thought it was going to be. So therefore he's really chuffed. It's all shite. But to him... His very low standard, sometimes he peaks above his very low stand. Well, no, his very low ability, sorry. That's amazing. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.